Oh, Ron Radke, a waste of the public. Tony Zamardi from AMDA. I've taken Pete Darconi's place. Actually, uh, Pete and I switched. Um, I, if some of you remember, I was a patrol captain here, oh, about 20 months ago, and I was sent to 77th Street as the area commanding officer. Um, and now they brought me back and uh, sent Pete to 77th Street. So um, well, I'm thrilled to come back. This is home for me. This is my fourth time here in Hollywood. I really go back to the, 19, the late 1980s. I worked twice here in 94 and 96. I was a patrol captain here uh, with uh, Beatrice Kamala, and now Deputy Chief, and then Pete and I were partners for about uh, 10 months as well. So uh, it's good to be back. It's only my second week back, but it's so good to come home to be uh, re-familiarized with the faces. And uh, it seems uh, from what I've learned in my situation awareness that the issues are still the issues. Uh, that's some significant growth though. I can, uh, my, the biggest, uh, accomplishment is the relationships that we've really shared today that I didn't have 20 months ago, especially internally in my own house, to, to know that um, units within my building have, have really uh, entrenched themselves in the entertainment district. Like Nietzsche's Vice, for example. When I worked Vice here uh, back in the day, we had, well, there wasn't a Hollywood Boulevard back in the day, but uh, even 20 months ago, the relationship that I had hoped, how you doing, sir, continue, the relationship that I had hoped would exist in the entertainment district uh, wasn't as strong. I've never seen it, uh, the thriving uh, partnership we have uh, that it's just not the entertainment district officers that work on this boulevard, that it's the entities within the house that consistently are engaged in what it takes out here. Uh, obviously, this is our biggest investment, uh, and that uh, will be my continued investment to have the relationships with the team here. And then internally, to always know that we're giving everything we got to to the, the part of the division which is responsible for most of our crime. We still see. Uh, they look at our numbers. Um, the majority of our crimes when we're high will come from the entertainment district, usually related to homelessness and some of the crimes we have. So um, I look forward to uh, continuing that uh, relationship building that Pete did to really make sure that everyone in, in my house had said that, uh, I'm 77 Street more, Hollywood is a true partner to what matters. Uh, and I know the bid is, 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 you know, that's your large responsibility of the entertainment district and the development, and that you can count on me as a partner. Um, and know that I'm available to you. I, you know, if I could sit down and have coffee with all of you eventually, that, that would be great to see, you know, uh, where you're coming from and where your heart is. I'm a heart-driven leader. It's about the relationship and servant leadership. I know there's a lot of uh, ideals and uh, values and different drives, but in the end, we work for the mayor, we work for the city of Los Angeles, and um, the economy's largely built on the success of this district, as, as you all of you know. So I want to be a great partner to you in that, uh, and understand that the people do live here and have uh, different values as well, and. Um, I'd love to say I want to meet everyone's expectations, but you know, every day you can count on me and my team that, uh, that we'll give it our best shot and that can respond to some of the issues and challenges uh, you have um, with how I deploy and with the knowledge I have as far as, you know, I'm running a multi-million dollar business in the end. And the accountability level of a command officer today is unlike anything I've ever experienced. Uh, and, uh, and these, for example, my relationship with the councilman is, is amazing. Yeah spent more time with the council than his people in the last two weeks than anyone. I'm a, I'm a Twitter guy, my Twitter's LAPD 2014, my first photo was with the councilman. Uh, as a young officer, 30, I've been on 30 years now, we so never had that kind of relationship, ever, uh, because you're okay for the chief 30 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Captain, I wonder if it would be helpful if we could just quickly have Sure, that'd be great. Who was in the room and, and then before we get though, I read really if, if you have a business and you want to sit down with a cup of coffee, even the guests here, get a hold of me. I'm easy to find. You can Google my name, and, uh, and if I can find time, I would love to sit down with you. The best way for me to learn is not to read about you, is to shake your hand and spend time with you. And I really mean that. So, sir, you look very familiar. Yeah, I'm John Trotson. Uh, <laughs> uh, I remember John from last time. Yeah, I'm <laughs> struck with the court bungalows, and I uh, chair the security committee for this organization. Yes. Uh, Brian Johnson, I'm the general manager of the Lowe's Hollywood Hotel. 
David Green, Needlelander, the Pan Davis Theater. Right, Thank you. Frank Stefan, uh, East Town, Mixed Use right. Project, and uh, a couple under insurance. That's correct. Mark Echeverria of Musso and Frank Group. Mark Stevenson uh, over at Hollywood United Methodist Church, and I've been in the community since 1986. Leslie Plumper, the Fonda Theater. Alyssa Van Green, DD and Associates with Gower Plaza. Ron Huber, Hollywood United Network, good partner of mine. Adam Lewis, 1600 Valley. Evan Kaiser, Suburban Company. Our company uh, manages the building that you're sitting in right now, like the home you Gallo Medina and I have the building right next door and the northwest corner of all the box. Oh, good. Thank you. Hi, I'm Claire Spanius. I'm a painting co. I was born in Hollywood. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> There's two. All right. Mm -hmm. There is a CLL. Great. Then we paint some collections. Devin Strecker, I work here for the bid. Oh, nice. Hi, Devin. Matthew Severson, I work for the bid. Ron Radke, of the Oasis of Hollywood on Ivar. We've been in Hollywood 37 years. Wow, congratulations. Tony Zamardi, I'm with Amda, right behind. Yes. Any other questions before I go? I, unfortunately, I have like three meetings at four o'clock. I have, I have so. one fun thing to show you. Oh. When you were here, I remember you said, oh, I don't know, it's That's Star right. Starbucks. Yes. So I made this up for you for 2013, 2014. <laughs> and then I kept texting, like, I want to come down and tour 77th Division. You don't want to go to 77th Division. <laughs> <laughs> I want to bring it to 77th Division. And he's like, yeah. yeah, yeah. I've never had it, so I'm going to actually hold on to this oh, good. so that we can then change the dates Beautiful. for uh, however long you're going to be here. Well, hopefully, it will be a long time. Hope I can finish my career here. Yeah, I've heard that before. Yeah, I really, <laughs> mean, I really mean it. Uh, I, I had in, in totally different environment. My first year in 77th Street, I had 50 murders, and then last year I had 53. I remember I was telling my daughter, we're doing some great things down there, and she's like, Great things, man. It's pretty dangerous down there. I had, I had 10 when I left this year, so. Uh, Pete still place. has 10. He hasn't had any. Of this. I've been here my second week, so uh, it's just a you know different community and with a whole different set of challenges. But um, I've had the whole different discussion. But it's great to have you guys as partners. You know, I, I truly believe that if you're invested in Hollywood in any capacity, whether you live here or whether you want to build and develop here, that you should know who your police captain is. You should have my personal cell phone number, which you'll have when I meet you individually, and you should be able to reach out and talk to me and, and find out what's in my heart or what's in the chief's heart or what's in, where we're going with this thing. Um, whether you need me for a resource or a service, uh, you should always know that Corey Cobb is the captain here and he's available to me and we can work as partners to make sure that public safety is a paramount, uh, paramount factor in how we grow as, as a team here. So, and there's a lot of different things I need to learn still and you know, I, have, I have a lot of time and you know, we take it one day at a time and really try and enjoy it this time. Um, uh, I think I will know when you guys are on my team. So, good enough. Well, we're back. Thank you. Thank, Thank you guys so much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gary. Everybody have an opportunity to I did vote that motion. I'll second. Thank you, Evan. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, thank you so much. Sure. It's easier to resist. Donut time, huh? <laughs> so, unfortunately, we got uh, we got the financials late last night and uh, just went through them this previous hour. But as far as um, the the income statement goes, it looks pretty clean. It looks like they got most of the coding errors that were were happening in Terry. Um, looks like those kind of been worked out. No, no big errors that I saw as far as uh, coding goes. The um, a couple things that we should point out. I don't know if we did last meeting or not, but um, on the budget variance report, the uh, employee vacation expense, we're expensing 2,600 um, per month. It seems like, and that wasn't budgeted for. And we're we're accruing for it on the on the balance sheet as a liability, right? And then at the end of the year, we're going to make one entry to. To do the balance, is that yeah, it throws us off whack. It, it shows up in our financial review each year as a uh, liability, but Jersey wants to include it in our actual uh, budget balance sheet. So because it's not budgeted, it creates an automatic variance. So. Sure. Um, and then as far as the outside services, um, here I sent you an email just now. I don't know if you got it or not. Yeah. Um, but it's a question about that outside tap, and so we can discuss that um, through that email. Um, everything else looks looked pretty clean on it. 
Um, the, the big issue that we've been running into is their billing. Um, they're coming in way above budget, what we, what we budgeted for. And uh, just earlier this week, Carrie, Joe, and I and, uh, we discussed why that is, and it was, it was far above budget. And in the agreement, there's a $60,000 cap, which was really put in there. And uh, we're, we're getting to that cap right now. And so what the next couple months, they're gonna show a zero. A $60,000 cap for a one year period. Yeah. And what, what month are we in? <coughs> in the, Carrie, we're in the eighth month. We're in, it was at June 1 through May 31st. Wow, and how long is that agreement? Is that, is that is it sort of the end of this year they're going to renegotiate because they lost some money? Or well, I, I, I did raise the issue with NAS that we, we need to have a conversation so that if they're not able to pull this off in the second year for that budget amount. You need a heads up. You need a heads up, yeah. yeah. So um, I think we're going to need to bring the finance committee together to kind of talk about that. We've done some analysis. We did a spreadsheet showing the different hours and hourly rates of different people that are involved touching our account, which on some months can be as many as six. So there definitely was a ramp up, um, you know, of a new system, creating a new budget template. Uh, I think people underestimate how complicated this budgeting system is. We've got assessment data coming in and um, managing a second bid, perhaps. So um, we'll, we're going to have to confer with the yeah. finance and I think the majority of the time was actually the setup, but they also transitioned the employees, so we want to evaluate that. Yeah, we want to pay for training. Right, and maybe it's just that. Just, just curious, what was the uh, budget for the previous? It was a, it was about sixty. About sixty. Yeah. So there definitely have been some some growing pains with with this new company. Um, and Carrie, you've got a conversation with them later this week. Is that next week? Next week. Yeah, she was going to sit with the staff and do a little. And I don't. I think it caught her by surprise. Sure. For the principal. Yeah. Well, yeah, and how much they've been billing us, and that they're capping six. Big yeah. shock for um, can you can you email me when that conversation is? And yes. That, that would be on the yeah, I think what's great that you guys are doing is actually forward looking that you know, we want to maintain and stay in the budget. Um, but this is a reminder for the board is that our product is great I mean, for where we are and getting everything put in place and receivable because we're using the staff time to track it on Excel. So all our financials tie in and then actually how we're being used for all the financials. So while we do have some budget issues, I think um, the work product is really good and um, you know, little tweaks in the air, um, but we'll figure out a good solution that will you know, So it's not like everything's, we're not getting um, the, a bad product for more money. Oh, no, not at all. I think the reporting is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but other than that, it, it looked pretty clean. Carrie, if there was anything that you saw that needs attention, that I, that I yeah. need to go. So. Yeah. <coughs> so, <coughs> like anybody have any questions on the financial reports before you know, there's a motion on the table? No questions? Okay, is there a motion? To approve the, the financials, yes. Um, Thank you, Gal. Second? Second. Thank you, Mark. Um, all in favor? Aye. Um, any opposed? And any abstentions? Thank you. Um, we do need to put a hand. Are you on the board of the course? We got 10 minutes, okay. right? So, so we also want to. Okay, yes, we want to move into the nominating committee. Um, nominating committee is John Lyons and Michael Gargano. Um, Michael, are you on the phone? Because John Lyons is not here. Michael, are you still there? I'm still here. I'm here. Okay. 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 Can you give your report, please, for nominating committee? Hey, Michael, can you give your report for the nominating committee? We're, we're all ears. Oh, um, I didn't even know I had to give a report. <laughs> <laughs> it was going to be John Lyons, and I don't But John isn't here, but you're our only other committee member that's here today. Oh, okay, because I believe that John met with the one person whose name was submitted. We called around, uh, we asked for some submissions. We didn't uh, get anyone who's available right now. We spoke to a few people who are interested in the future, but could be convinced to do it today. But we had the one representative of ANDA, and I believe that John was going to meet with him. So, Carrie, I don't know. Yeah, let me fill in the gaps. Okay. 
Um, so in your packet, you do have a brown uh, letter from Jan of uh, representing, she's the office, she's the copy and I'm recommending Tony Lombardi, who is here in the room, um, uh, to uh, represent Amber's properties, which if you look on uh, the application, uh, I didn't quite know that their property holdings were quite so extensive, but now we've got 10 properties. Um, one of those might be in the sunset mid, actually. So, oh, from York, okay. <laughs> oh, so, um, uh, I asked, uh, I know that John Lyons and Greg Beck had probably an hour meeting with me in John's office about a week ago, and uh, John, talked to John afterwards, they wholeheartedly recommend him to um, be elected to the board. And if John was here, I'm sure he would make that motion. He's here. Thank you. Well, there donuts that have been here. So John, I just teed up your nominating committee. And Tony is here in the room, and the board has his letter and application, so you might be in the position where they perform that motion. Uh, well, I would like to make a motion to elect Tony Zimbardi to fill a vacancy, created by the resignation of Tony Zimbardi. Second. Great. Second. All second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Welcome aboard. Thank you. I just like to say that I worked with Tony for at least a decade, maybe <laughs> several years. Yeah. And uh, he's been a consummate professional, and I think he's going to be a big asset to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Um, next, we Yes, we Sure. Well, we had our security meeting on March 9th, um, and uh, we had all of our usual reports. Um, the uh, one main update relative to our last meeting was that we were we were contemplating launching a, a pilot program for nighttime security. Um, we were hoping to secure some funding from the councilman's office to do something meaningful. Um, that commitment has, has not come in. Um, and also there, as Captain Falcon was here, there's a turnover uh, at the top of the LAPD and this request was, was made by Captain Zarconi. Um, so uh, given that the, the, those two variables have occurred, um, we have decided to postpone the pilot program uh, until sometime in the future this, the, the, the security committee will come back to this board with some recommendations on length and a scope and a mission. Um, ideally, it's after the ACE program is put into place, so we, we, we think it would be most effective then. And. Uh, even more ideally, we need to secure some outside funding or we're going to have to pull some money away from the daytime, which we've already discussed, really doesn't work. So um, that's on hold um, and we'll, we'll continue to, to try to make that happen at some point in the future. Um, John, mm -hmm. question, uh, since that was a vote that had been approved by the board, do we need to take any action? No, we, we, not at this time, we can still implement it, um, but we don't have to implement it immediately. And if we decide we don't want to implement it down the road, we can, we can take that vote at that time. I think it's still the will of the security committee to try to gather the data of how effective the nighttime security presence would be. Um, it's just that this, the biggest struggle is we need, to, we need to do it right for officer safety purposes. Ideally, it's a meaningful amount of time where we can gather a, a meaningful data you know, database of how many interactions and, and how the relationship is with the LAPD and what the environment is out there. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll just table that until 
the time comes to fire it back up again, or to just say, you know what, we'll wait to the next bid if we even wait, if, even if we, we even do it then. Was, um, there any, was there any indication from Farrell's office of whether they're going to? Initially, the meeting that uh, Bill Farrar from Andrews and I had with him was very positive, um, but it just there hasn't been any commitment yet, and I don't know whether that that um, in reality is you know trying to make everybody feel like he really wants to help and at the end of the day can't or whether he's still thinking about it or whether it's imminent and just can't process it quickly enough so i really don't have any guidance on why it hasn't come in but it, you know it, he had a pretty large pool of money he was talking about being able to play with uh, we weren't sure exactly how much of that, if any of that, was going to come our way. So it really could, it could be absolutely nothing. It could be, you know, uh, an amount to fund a, a, a three-month program, or it could be something more significant to go through. Originally, he had talked about going through the summer, when it's the busiest season. Uh, that had, you know, indicated maybe a six-month commitment. But... Um, but until we hear from some definitive answer from Mitch's office, it just doesn't really make sense for us to to roll out something for 30 days and on a skeleton crew. And I, I'd rather do it once and do it right. <coughs> and then the uh, ACE program? Yeah, I'm thinking that maybe um, uh, just put that on hold for a moment just so I know Haynes can do their report for them on time constraint. And, and I know also Evan and Gallo have a report that. So we can move a couple things around with that. Sure. So, yeah. uh, thanks for having us. Um, I'm Jenny Paints. We do public relations and marketing for the bid, and I know we've met with a lot of folks here every year. We come and do a report, kind of looking back and looking forward, which is what we'll do today. Um, and when we started, uh, I think it was our first or second meeting. Uh, it was a look at where we saw the Holland and Brain going, what we were to do, uh, working with the bid to be able to move uh, to the deal. And one of the things that came out of that, and I talked to John and Mark and um, with John and uh, Michael and lots of other people who've heard this before. So we wanted to talk about, we ended up landing on changing the conversation about Hollywood. So in the news, particularly a couple of years ago, there was a lot of negative, content, a lot of crime, uh, particularly over the summers, and it really spike up. And the stories we were hearing about Hollywood in the media weren't exactly uh, where we wanted the stories to be. So our goal was to start shining light on the bright spots in Hollywood, all the amazing things that are happening here, to educate people that there's a larger story. So today's conversation, we're going to talk about four ways that the bid, you're changing the conversation. We're going to talk looking back over the last year. We're going to talk about four ways that we're going to end. We'll go quickly through four ways that we're looking going forward into 2016 17. So, first of all, looking back, we'll talk about media outreach, branding. You guys have a brand new logo, which was just approved. It took three years, but <laughs> we're really excited. It's on trash cans now, which is a big win for Right. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to talk about only in Hollywood Festival the, the first year, and then we'll talk about issues management. I'm going to turn it over to Teresa, who has their media outreach. So um, we all know that one of the ways that people know about Hollywood or think they know about Hollywood is through media. So that's one of our focus areas. We really want to build relationships with media, continue to build relationships with media as we have from the start. Um, by educating them about what is happening in Hollywood through new developments. And so some of the ways that we have done that in the past year sound very basic but very important. One-on-one um, -on -one briefings on the state of Hollywood. So taking a group of target media and literally sitting down with them and walking them through the changing face of Hollywood and all of the new developments and sometimes um, walking them through the district to show them in real life. Another thing that we have continued to do that we started when we first started working with you guys um, is theme blogging. We're taking a theme that we feel will resonate with the media um, and then show some bright spots that fit under that theme and literally walk the boulevard and show people what these developments are in real life. And then, of course, we focus also on only in Hollywood, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. 
So what we decided to do is just take key media pla placements last year to show you um, the changing conversation about Hollywood and pull quotes from those and read them so you can start to see literally how we're changing the conversation. So this is a piece in Travel and Leisure um, that we worked on and um, the writer had a phone conversation with Carrie. Um, we set her up with you know, the key messages that we wanted to deliver about the bid and the resulting article, we couldn't have written a better um, headline, The New Old Hollywood. And the full quote here is, New decades, two decades ago, this place was all tattoo parlors and sex stores. But like downtown LA, another formerly forlorn enclave, a few exits down the 101, Hollywood is in transition. Now, stylish newcomers are opening nonstop. So again, changing the conversation and talking about the world and, and the great place of bright spots. This was a one-on-one -on -one briefing that we set up for Carrie over the phone with um, meetings today. And the key thing here is that um, the audience is uh, very focused on meeting platters that are looking for um, cities and venues that we think can hold their meetings. So a very focused opportunity for us to reach out to that very um, target market. And the pull quote here is, and, and by the way, they focus not on, uh, only on Hollywood, but also on downtown LA, but Hollywood was actually the largest portion of the piece. Um, and they also had, um, the only photos that they featured in the story were Hollywood and not downtown, and two pictures of Israel, so mark like that. Thank you. <laughs> so the pull quote here is, Hollywood is growing up as a community with respect to nightlife. The turn of the 21st century was a nightclub chapter from 1999 to 2009. It is now evolving, partially driven by the fact that there are so many more residents. Today, Hollywood has a more sophisticated nightlife scene. So again, showing the transition of where we were and where we're going. This is an example of something that comes out of our, our blogger tours that we conduct. And this one was focused on um, what's up and coming and where up and coming artists are featured in the large month buzz. And the full quote here is, walking Cahuenga Boulevard near Hollywood in the evening, I was struck by how quickly bars and restaurants change. How many new venues and shops are tucked in along Hollywood Boulevard now? Pushing out many of the older, dicier establishments and how young the crowd was out enjoying a Hollywood view. Pretty much speaks for itself. And more recently, we focused on announcing the new location of um, the bid and the resulting pitching efforts and uh, the piece in Beverly Press, um, a full quote from there, direct quote from Harry. By opening their new location at street level, Morrison said it symbolically shows that they believe in the area so much that they are willing to work and invest in a quality business operation. We're going to be very intentional about meeting our neighbors this year, and we know that to be true. We also did a push around kid-friendly, family-friendly opportunities in Hollywood, um, focused mainly on the Hollywood and Highland area um, of the bid. And this was a mommy blogger that we were able to set up with a one-on-one -on -one tour of some uh, kid-friendly uh, venues. And the quote here is, Hollywood today is so much different. There's a ton to do. Only in Hollywood is a pretty cool website where you can get all the information you want about the city. So great little plug for our uh, burgeoning website. Um, so along the way, we also started to talk to you a lot about branding, and I think that one of the things that we set out to do when we started our work with you was to talk to you about the power of the brand that you sit upon, which is Hollywood. I mean, it's mythical, it's dynamic, it's exciting, eclectic, ever-changing, and ever-growing. And so um, this year, we continued evolution of the brand and strengthened brand stewardship, meaning how well do we all live the brand? How do we brand from the inside out? Um, so in the process of doing that, we did a refined and more recognizable brand identity, which also is an indicator of urban renewal, and other cities have done this very effectively to let people know as a harbinger of change. Um, we increased adherence to brand standards, so we want things to come out of Hollywood to look like they came out of Hollywood. Um, we streamlined decision making along the way, you know, it's much easier to figure out what an ad should look like, what a sign should look like when you have a brand guideline. And we extended reach via new programming and events um, like all of me in Hollywood 2015, the Music and Arts Festival. So here you go, brand new, beautiful logo. Um, it has kind of the historic and yet contemporary edge to it. The pins off the letters, pretty much like the old signs you see still on some of the rooftop buildings. Um, and then we looked at it programmatically, which we always want to do. How does this logo fit together into a system? We devised a color palette, typefaces, a web typeface, 
even the system of iconography to talk about different issues and places that are an issue and a part of the conversation that's ever changing. Um, and so this really became a tool now that literally anybody could sit down with Devin or myself or anybody involved with the brand and get a very clear idea and a very clear picture of what we're about, what we stand for, what we want to stand for in the future, and how we're going to get there. Um, and then along came the music festival. So not every brand gets an opportunity to launch a logo for their core brand and then do a secondary brand a few months later, but we did, and it was fun and exciting. And so um, using though the same platform, the same color palettes, the same fonts, the same sort of sensibility, but adding a little bit more artistic edge to it to be appropriate to the festival, we created a whole identity around um, Only in Hollywood Music and Arts Festival that included a very omni-channel approach. So we did online applications. We even created little bugs that could be posted on Instagram. Um, we did things from Twitter. So every touch point that was going to ultimately reach somebody who was interested in or was going to hear about the festival would see a very consistent, cohesive visual narrative. And that visual narrative is backed by a very real, authentic narrative, which is very much Hollywood. Um, so you'll see here, the far left on the bottom, um, an example of what lived on the website. We also were in partnership with KCRW, so we had um, insertions into their site to create this browser for our event. Um, there was a large banner site on the outside of Avalon, it was huge, but even close site, cross street banners, um, and then all different ways of interpreting sort of the rhythm and beat that is Hollywood as through the lens of music and arts. Um, we also helped um, the bid in devising plans and ways to connect to sponsorships and to restaurateurs, bars. So we had um, idea generation around what's an opportunity for a restaurant during the music festival. Someone comes in wearing the button. Is there a drink special? Is there a prefix menu? Can you hurry their um, service along because they need to get to somewhere by a certain time? And so all of this, I think, is so essential to the success of the overall event and gives us the platform to dramatically evolve it and improve it and expand it in the coming months as we head towards October of this year. Um, so with that, I'll let go back to my parents from here. Yeah, yes. So talking about the media relations, um, we, you know, our goal is to raise visibility for the events and our partners, and again, continue to change the conversation in Hollywood about Hollywood. And so similar to what I did with the other media outreach, we wanted to share just some key clips and pull quotes from those. And one of the things that we wanted to point out is that uh, with Only in Hollywood, even though there were actually hundreds of venues that participated, there were a finite number of venues that participated, but the media coverage that resulted, um, people who read that or see it, they only look at Hollywood, and so everything that we that resulted from the media coverage um, really kind of speaks to what's happening overall in Hollywood. So NBC Los Angeles, uh, this one is a little bit of a tongue twister, so bear with me. Uh, it's still not little, nor is the Hollywood sign, and the number of venues offering brain embiggening, heart enriching, funny bone scratching fare around Tinseltown are plentiful to the extreme. Um, again, speaking to kind of the breadth of the entertainment experience here. Hollywood. Elias, which you might be able to talk about it a little bit, was a key piece or was a key piece in our um, Only in Hollywood coverage. The pool quote there was dozens of local bands, performers, and artists will be featured at three anticipated events throughout Hollywood as part of a massive neighborhood festival. There's bound to be something for everyone. Again, kind of showing the breadth of the entertainment experience. And then we just wanted to show some um, key <laughs> headlines and, and a few other clips. Beverly Press quoted only in Hollywood Music and Arts Festival to show a new side of neighborhood. And then these are some of the headlines of some of the other pieces that we were able to secure. It's just kind of nice to see that we were wrapped into some of these great roundups. The 10 things we have to do this November in LA. Find out what happens only in Hollywood. A massive four day music and arts festival is coming to Hollywood. Um, and this, I wanted to just read a little clip. It says, Hollywood, it knows a little something about arts and music. Yes, of course, uh, more than the nightclub only. And then here's another um, headline that we wanted to show you, your ultimate guide to November, 20 cool events happening in Los Angeles that we're able to get in as part of that roundup. So here, this is uh, from Google Analytics. It's looking at how people 
people came to the website during the festival. And so the top one is LAist, and about um, nearly 4,000 people clicked from LAist to the Only in Hollywood website to learn about the festival. So that was a, a really nice uh, way to track the influence of the media coverage. What's really cool about the LAist article is not only did it drive all that traffic, but if you saw on the previous slide, which is tiny, but it did say that it had um, that article had 5,000 likes. So 5,000 people clicked like on that article on Facebook, and that's just on Facebook. So uh, the cool thing about that is that a lot of people read these articles, they may come, they may not come, but the idea that they're hearing about Hollywood in this new way is really important. And you can kind of keep going through, you can kind of see Red Tricycle, that's kind of number seven, uh, it drove traffic there, and that was for kids. And so people come a lot of different ways. We just wanted to show the media one. And you can see oh, people came a lot of different ways. And at the bottom chart shows what happened to the website traffic during the show. So you can see we're going really well, and then we shoot way up <laughs> during the festival over the weekend. So um, that was an exciting thing because those are the people, a lot of them are new to Hollywood website. And so we can introduce them to the kind of things they can find there. Here, are just some uh, screenshots from Instagram. I don't know if everybody's big on Instagram here, but you can, if you uh, look at OIH 2015 hashtag or the Hollywood Festival hashtag, you can see that people who came to the event, they took lots of pictures of the shows that they watched, um, and some of the quotes are really fun. Um, so here it says, uh, thank you ever so much for tuning the Holy Hollywood Music Festival. Somebody else wrote, uh, hopefully we can plan it next year. Uh, some of the fans did, so it was a lot of fun that you could see people engaging and really responding to it. Number four in the four ways we're changing, we're changing the conversation about Hollywood is patient management. And this is the thing that um, where we uh, serve as a resource for Carrie and Ben when there are issues that come up. Uh, uh, this past year, I think we had a stabbing, a shooting, and a homeless issue kind of um, exploded in the fall. So on each of those times, Carrie would be called by media, so we would work with her to be able to respond in a way that represented uh, the property of the position on those issues. <coughs> the second thing around issues management is uh, with the blog. So we've had a blog for um, a couple of years now. And well, one thing that Carrie's been doing is posting about uh, the homeless issue. And there's two blog posts in particular that she uh, posted about the homeless issue, including primary research from your security team about where people are coming from the homeless people here. And both of those uh, actually ended up influencing and informing policy. So among the homeless policymakers in the city, people were reading this and sharing it. Before, there wasn't really a bid for uh, the bid to have a place online to share their information where people could link to it and share it, and that it was for a long time. So the blog is paying off in, in, in a way that really wasn't anticipated for us, uh, but that's pretty exciting uh, going forward. And the other thing is when people call stakeholders or residents and say, I'm really concerned about the homeless issue, Perry can offer, or the staff can offer a place where people can get educated about the issue and about how it's affecting them. City and what the bid is doing about it. So looking forward, we'll go quickly through these. Um, media outreach and issues management, continuing that, uh, branding, growth initiative, and only in Hollywood 2016. So really quickly on the media outreach end, we know that the desk side briefings one-on-one -on -one approach is working, so we want to continue to do that, as well as the blogger tours. Um, we think that that shows um, you know, uh, another face of Hollywood to folks on the ground. Um, we want to work towards more partner announcements, working with um, our partners in the bid to um, literally partner on announcements together to the media, um, new developments, venues, et cetera, more than just the blogger tours, more than the one-on-ones, but actually issuing a news announcement together. Um, one of the ways that we think we can do that is more regular outreach with area marketing and PR contacts really just regularly reaching out to them, finding out what they're working on, and kind of hopefully the stars align and we meet in one place and we can kind of work on a meeting announcement together. And then of course, ongoing issues management council. That's fine, yeah. We're gonna keep branding, everyone. <laughs> so it's going well, we're gonna keep doing it. Uh, so some of the priorities and some of the ideas percolating around branding and continue to extend our imprint on the area. Um, and with the imprint being with the intention to make people feel safe, to make them feel a sense of place and to give the whole neighborhood unity of purpose. 
Um, it's not just about slapping logos on things, so I want to be really clear about that. We should only ever put our logo on something that represents us well and is providing a service to the community. Um, so with that in mind, why wouldn't we bid? Why wouldn't we brand bid security and team street team? So you can see we've sort of comped in our logo onto a cleanup truck and on a security vehicle. But you can see how it sends a really clear message. Was just when you see that, that doesn't exist yet, but you feel like that should exist like that. Because it tells people there's somebody behind this work. There's somebody who cares. And we're only in Hollywood together. Um, so I think it's really important. The um, more challenging is rebranding the mid bit. You know, the mid bit I like to think of as this transitory thoroughfare um, that really needs to become a destination in its own right. We have to figure out a way to celebrate this eclectic, edgy sort of destination um, in a way that feels right but gets better. Um, some of the ways we could do that are in things that we're starting to percolate on. How would, we, how would we engage local artists to have places where they can have expression? All those roll down doors that come down at night, what if there was art on them and they were lit? You know, there's a lot of different things we could do in that. Um, what about creating more public spaces? And there's been a lot of conversation about this parklets and mini places and places to sit and hang out and little, um, you know, areas that come off the sidewalk that allow for places for people to sort of intersect with one another in sort of a very neighborhood feeling way. And then overall to enhance the sense of place. So what is what do we want this to feel like? And I think that really before we can brand it, we have to define it. And so I think that's where the real work comes. The brand is really then what it stands for, the label we put on it later. But ultimately I think it's an exciting challenge but it is definitely going to be an interesting challenge. But it, I think it can be done, and I think there's indications in other communities where they have taken really sort of forgotten places and revived them and given them new purpose. I think of Brooklyn and Williamsburg and all kinds of communities in New York that have done these things. So this will be an exciting um, part of moving forward. And then the other thing is, now that you're in the mid-bid, um, we've been talking a lot about what would we do with the storefront windows that exist here to create presence to let people know that the bid is here, that there are people who care about the community who are here. Um, so some of the ideas that we've been toying around with is sort of this idea of these sort of cubist constructions that would sort of be very evocative of urban architecture, sort of buildings, different heights, different sizes, but the cubes also provide us all of these wonderful flat surfaces where we can message we can, during music festival, they might have all the hashtags and images from last year's festival, and then they rotate and we're into holiday shopping season, or we're into Sons of the Nine, or different, various things that could be um, part of a way that we're in dialogue with the passersby on the street. And I think most importantly, it's a way to send this message that there's this group here, and that they're working on behalf of the community, and that the community gets better all the time because of them. One thing about branding is that we know that uh, having everything look the same means that people can understand that it's all coming from the bid, particularly if going to renewal phase, that we want to be very clear about that. The third thing that we'll look at this year is the growth initiative. I know the board has voted to take a position on this. Uh, the bid is a real natural source of information, so we know because Carrie's already getting the phone call. Uh, we want to, we have an ability to add her incredible voice and share facts on this, and that's what we're working with the bid to come up with facts for Hollywood, and I know Chamber's doing, um, the LA Chamber's doing focus groups and that kind of thing for their next messages. And it's also a way to change the conversation to talk about the great things that are happening. Uh, Emerson is called just the Sunset Bid, but it is an example of a property that wouldn't have been built with the current. Uh, finally, only in Hollywood 2016, we're looking at extending what has been built. Last year, we were kind of building the plane as we were flying it, trying to figure out, create a festival that didn't actually exist and make it look cool and fun and bring people in. Uh, now we want to continue to grow that, continue to uh, bring in sponsors and uh, do the marketing around that. So this is a slide from one of our very first presentations to the year where we talked about making Hollywood visible and relevant changing the conversation about Hollywood. So what we tried to do today was more shows and tell. We wanted to see some of the closed pieces and the coverage that we've gotten and 